The sun is really, really, really big. It's also really tough. There aren't many things near the solar system that could destroy it, and that's probably a good thing. However, what if we assume that we have unlimited materials and resources to accomplish one goal? And that goal is to destroy the sun! What would it take to do that? Would we use black holes, antimatter, or simple, classic iron? Let's find out! But first, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, sign up for the mailing list, and smash that subscribe button. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Gad. Fair warning, this video is going to contain a lot of speculation. Yes, thank you, computer. Before we figure out how to extinguish the one thing that our planet needs above all others to help sustain a living biosphere, we'll have to understand what the sun is. First off, the sun isn't made of fire. That sounds really obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people I talk to who think it is. The sun is a star, duh, and it's composed of glowing gases that we call plasmas. Without the heat and light of the sun, we would not be here. But specifically, the sun is a yellow dwarf star. Its gravity holds the solar system together. The orbits of the planets around the sun's barycenter represent a delicate balance. Any large object, like say something on the order of Jupiter's size, like another star or roaming black hole, has the potential to upset that balance in crazy ways, which we'll be demonstrating with Universe Sandbox because I'm still too cheap to own a supercomputer. As we explained in another video, the inner workings of a star are like a balancing act between gravity and the pressure produced inside the core of the star. Inside yellow dwarf stars, the primary fuel source is hydrogen. In fact, 91% of the gas the sun is made up of is hydrogen. It fuses this fuel into energy, specifically helium, that is transferred to the outer layers of the star, where it produces light and heat for all of us bipedal ape descendants to take for granted. Temperatures on the sun can get as hot as 15 million degrees Celsius. Electrical currents produced inside the sun produce an incredibly powerful magnetic field that envelops the entire solar system. When the sun burns through all of its fuel, pay attention, this will be important later, the war going on inside the star's core between the force of gravity and the pressure produced by its ongoing fusion reaction is decided. Gravity wins. The core collapses into a white dwarf or a neutron star, and especially large stars are blown apart in a supernova that will basically destroy everything that was unlucky enough to still be orbiting the star in a massive explosion. So, knowing that the Sun contains 99.8% of the mass in the entire solar system, and that it is also 1,392,000 kilometers in diameter, how the crap would you even begin fathom destroying it? And could water, of all things, do the trick? In short, the answer is a big, hilarious no at least on the surface. As we mentioned earlier, the sun is not made of fire. It's a gigantic ball of plasma produced by nuclear fusion. No amount of water thrown at the sun would ever be able to put it out, so to speak. In fact, since a main component of water is hydrogen, you'd effectively just be adding fuel to the fire, to use a horrible, Horrible analogy, because terrible puns. But in addition to this, oxygen is also a byproduct of fusion. So in effect, all you'd be doing is making the sun larger and hotter. However, if you were a patient and long-lived bipedal ape descendant, say like a Time Lord, then it's possible that adding all this H2O could shorten the life of the sun. Larger and hotter stars have much shorter lifespans, so by aiming your water death ray at the sun, you could, on a long enough timeline, cause the sun to burn fuel faster, and maybe someday go supernova if it gets large enough. And hey, that counts, right? Okay, maybe you want to shorten the life of the sun on a shorter timeline. We're not elves, after all, and we've got things to do. So, what would happen if we just injected a bunch of iron into the sun's core? The 
The energy required to fuse iron is more than the energy we end up getting from the reaction. With that in mind, would we be able to extinguish the sun if we quote unquote injected enough iron into its core? Could iron be considered poison to stars? On a long enough timeline, when a star's hydrogen fuel runs out, it will switch to helium. After that, it will transition to oxygen and then silicon and pretty much every other element on the periodic table. But a star's size plays a large role, get it, in what types of fuel it ends up consuming, aka how far across the periodic table it ends up covering over its lifespan. But for stars that are around eight times as massive as our sun, they can reach the 26th element on the periodic table. Yes, folks, that is iron, baby. Just pretend I started playing Iron Man from Ozzy. But because the energy required to fuse iron is more than the energy you get from it, all it would take would be a fraction of a second to shut down the core of the sun. Game, set, match, gravity wins. Core collapses, maybe it becomes a white dwarf, neutron star, black hole, or explodes as a supernova. But that's only if a giant star naturally built up to fusing iron in its core. What if you introduce iron through some other magical science fiction-esque nonsense method? Would it yield the same result? No, not really. Of course, you could absolutely destroy the sun if you just shut off its core. But injecting iron into the sun isn't going to shut the core down. It's just going to cause it to have more mass. In fact, 0.1% of the sun's makeup is iron. So unless you replace the sun's core, all we're really going to accomplish is destroying the Earth, which I suppose is a nice consolation prize. Am I right, Bezos? These two sections haven't been super satisfying though, have they? So what would happen if a wandering black hole or one we created ourselves hit the sun? Let's find out. Obviously, a black hole could totally destroy the sun. The question is how, and what would actually happen? Well, wandering black holes are actually pretty common. Galaxy cluster halos are thought to have thousands of them. But did you know that there are an absolutely massive number of supermassive black holes wandering around the universe too? Yeah, on August 23rd of this year, it was announced that these massive objects are far more common than we thought. Supermassive black holes are primarily known for sitting at the center of large galaxies, like our own. They're the driving force behind galaxy formation and evolution. While we've developed methods for observing these stellar monsters at the center of galaxies, their wandering counterparts are far harder to spot, so we've really only got simulations to point toward their potential existence. But if those simulations are right, then it's very possible that the local universe contains a fair number of them wandering around between galaxies. So what if one came toward our own star? Well, let's just say things would not end well. For example, if a black hole like Cygnus X1, which is 6,000 light years away from us, 44 kilometers in diameter, and estimated to be around 21.2 times the mass of the sun, came within one light year of the sun, it would cause absolute chaos to unfold in our solar system. Within a single year, the orbits of the outer planets would be drastically altered. And since objects in the outer region of the solar system would be most affected, so too would objects in the Kuiper Belt and Oort cloud, potentially sending them on collision courses with the Earth. In fact, even at a single light year of distance, it's possible that the orbit of the Sun could be altered as well. As you can see here, after a while, the Earth's temperature has dropped from an average of over 7 degrees Celsius all the way down to 3 degrees Celsius. And black holes that are much, much larger than this can cause damage much, much faster. A black hole 10 million times the mass of the Sun just obliterates the solar system, even at a distance of one light year. Even one million solar masses is just too much, as the planets and the Sun just get gobbled up like they're being sucked up by a freaking cosmic vacuum vacuum cleaner. In other words, bad news for both the Sun and Earth. Thankfully, you're more likely to be struck by lightning than the solar system is to be visited by a black hole. Though, a black hole visiting us is far more likely than me winning the lottery several times in a row. And trust me, I've tried. But what if we created a black hole and launched it at the Sun? Well, even a black hole with a mass four times that of Earth launched at the Sun looks like it would devour it. In another video on black holes, we talked about how Planet Nine could potentially be a baseball-sized black hole around four times the mass of the Earth. These types of black holes are known as primordial black holes, and they're super rare, mainly because we haven't found any yet. Okay, but you might say, Eric, we can't make black holes and we can't inject water or iron into the sun, so none of these methods count. And you're right. 
we can't do these things, and it's unlikely that we'd ever be able to move the equivalent of stars or even planets into a position where they would be potentially able to be gobbled up by the sun. But what about antimatter? We can make small amounts of it right now. What would happen if we sent antimatter at the sun? Antimatter is the opposite of normal matter. We talked about this in an older video, and it's thought that if matter were to come in contact with antimatter, then it would cause both to be annihilated. So it stands to reason that if we sent enough antimatter at the sun, then it should destroy it, right? Well, believe it or not, the sun actually produces small amounts of antimatter, and the Earth is bombarded by antimatter particles from cosmic rays, albeit a very, very small amount. Scientists have even seen evidence of antimatter production above thunderstorms. What's fascinating though is that bananas and humans also produce antimatter. Bananas contain a small amount of potassium-40, a naturally occurring isotope of potassium that as it decays releases a positron in the process. This is orders of magnitude below what it would take to destroy the Earth though. Humans have only produced 15 nanograms of antimatter. Just one gram, though, would be enough to generate enough energy to rival a nuclear explosion. But, thankfully, humans haven't even created enough antimatter to boil a cup of tea. But, if we could, how much would it take to annihilate the sun? So if an antimatter star of the same size and mass of the sun was on a direct collision course with the sun, then their collision would more than likely result in the destruction of both bodies. The amount of energy released from just one gram of antimatter colliding with a gram of normal matter would release around 9 times 10 to the 13th power joules of energy, which is a bit confusing, but it translates to 21.5 kilotons of energy, and we definitely understand that, right? Right? Who am I kidding? No one saw that video. To figure out how much destructive force would be released from an anti-star slamming into our own and <clears throat> eliminating each other, I guess a good start would be to figure out how much our sun weighs in grams and then multiply by 21.5. Well, according to the internet, the sun has a mass equal to 1,988,500 kilograms. If we convert that to grams, we get 1,988,500,000 grams. If we multiply that number by 21.5 kilotons, we get 42,752,750,000 kilotons of explosive energy. Modern nuclear weapons can release about 475 kilotons, and the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki weighed in at 15 kilotons. That means that slamming an anti-star into the sun would probably produce about 2,850,183,333 atomic bombs worth of explosive force. That is a ton of explosive energy, but it's not nearly as powerful as a supernova. In fact, our sun is too small to actually go supernova. Only the largest stars can do it, and they usually release a few octillion nuclear warheads worth of explosive force. But make no mistake, the sun would explode if it came into contact with an anti-star. But this extremely simplified math suggests that it wouldn't be quite as powerful as a supernova explosion. But we'd still be screwed. So to answer our question, is it possible to destroy the sun? Yes. Do we have the technological capability to do so? No. At least, not yet. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Speaking of which, check out all those awesome names. Thank you, patrons. And hey, if you did content like this, maybe you'd like to find out where the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs came from, and if it has a sibling. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time sucked up by a freaking cosmic vacuum cleaner.